In this problem, we're given a vector field, which is given by this expression. And you can see that there are no k components for this vector field. So all the vectors point in a direction parallel to the xy plane. And then I actually highly recommend you graph this out yourself online. You'll get some pretty elegant patterns. The vectors tend to point in directions like this. You get a pretty elegant pattern, so I highly recommend you graph this out yourself online. And then in order to verify Stokes' theorem, we're going to have to do a line integral. And then the path that we're going to integrate will be a circular path centered at the origin. And it will be a circle with a radius of r. So let's call this path C. And let's say we're going around this path in an anti-clockwise direction. So in order to verify Stokes' theorem, let's first do the line integral first. So we're going to take the vector field and then we're going to adopt this with a tiny piece of the path and then we're going to integrate around the circle. So in this video I'm going to focus on the line integral. In the next video I'm going to do the double integral and then it, we will see that we'll get the same answer as we expect from Stokes' theorem. So in order to evaluate this integral, I'd like to first parameterize the path that we're taking around this, uh, that we're going to take. So the path can be represented by this uh, vector valued function. And then since this is circular, it's very easy to parameterize. We can just use cosine t and then sine t. And then we will allow t to go from 0 to 2 pi. And you can see that when t is equal to 0, you basically just start off at this point. And then as t goes on, you just traverse this circle. And then once t reaches 2 pi, you would have reached your starting point. So this is how I'm going to parameterize our path. So with this done, it will be easy to evaluate this uh, line integral. So this line integral by itself, it's an abstract concept. You have this vector field, you're going to chop up your path in tiny pieces, you're going to take the dot product, and then you're going to add everything up. So by itself, this is hard to evaluate. But then we can use, then we can use uh, substitution to change this into a regular integral. So we're going to use substitution, and then we're also going to use our parameterized path. So we're going to get something like this. So we have the vector field dot the uh, derivative of the path with, with respect to t, and then now this is going to be a normal integral with respect to t. So now we can simplify this expression over here. So note that the vector field is equal to a y. a y is just a and then r sine t in the i direction, and then bx x is just r cosine t in the j direction, and then we dot this with the derivative of the position vector with respect to time, so we get r negative sine t, negative r sine t in the i direction, and then we have r cosine t in the j direction, and then dt. And then here we just have a dot product, so in the end our integrand is going to look something pretty pretty nice, pretty easily to evaluate. So we have negative a r square sine square t, so that's for the i term. And for the j term, we have b r squared cosine squared t. And this should be pretty easy to evaluate. All we have to do is just to integrate sine squared t and cosine squared t. Now we can do that by considering the double angle formula. Cosine 2t is equal to 2 cosine squared t minus 1, and it's also equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared t. So we can change sine squared t into 1 minus cosine 2t divided by 2. And then we can change cosine squared t to 1 plus cosine 2t divided by 2. And you can see that if you integrate this, you're going to get t minus uh, t over 2 minus sine 2t over 4, evaluating from 0 to 2 pi. Similarly, for the cosine squared term, if after you integrate this, you're going to get t over 2 plus sine 2t over 4 from 0 to 2 pi. And then as you know, if you substitute in 0 for everything, it's going to become 0, obviously. And then when you substitute in 2 pi, what you're going to get, so first of all, let's just write this constant out first. When you substitute in 2 pi, of course, you get 2 pi divided by 2, so that's just pi. And then you have sine 4 pi, which is just 0, so we can ignore that term. So we have something like this. And the same goes for this side. So let's write out the constants first. 
you substitute in 2 pi, you get 2 pi over 2, so that's just 2. You get sine 4 pi, that's 0. And then for 0, everything is just 0, so everything goes away, which is good. So in the end, you have pi r squared b minus a. And so this is what our line integral is going to evaluate to.